The purpose of this video tutorial is to describe how live load reduction works in Adapt Builder. This is primarily for the design of columns and for floors with or without beams. In Adapt, we have a multi-story structure and we're going to show the different ways to achieve live load reduction in the program, how they're used, and what uh, characteristics each particular method has. So we're going to start with columns. If we go to the option for um, column design, you'll notice this option for live load reduction settings. This is also found in the loading ribbon, live load reduction settings here. So if we look at that dialog, we can see that first of all, there are no reducible load cases that have been defined. We need to go ahead and define one of our load cases to be reducible. This particular method found here in loading and also in column design applies strictly to column live load reduction. And that's an important distinction between what we'll show for floors. So let's go ahead and select loading load case. I'm going to select this live load and I'm going to set this as reducible. This tag applies only to the settings found in the um, location boxes here, these tabs for live load reduction settings. We'll go ahead and select OK. This, this particular model has been loaded with live load. If we go ahead and just show the uniform loads, those are set to all the different levels uh, in the structure. So this has live load included. Let's go back to live load reduction settings. And in this dialog, we want to define the areas. So there's different ways we could achieve this. We could automatically just program in the different options, for example, from IBC or ASC 7 for live load reduction, whether it's the um, main method or the alternate method. In this case, in the first implementation of live, live load reduction for columns, the user must fill out the area for the, the accumulation and also the factor associated with the area. So this gives the user um, the ability to customize the different regions. If we select right click and append, we can enter these um, input rows. So we're going to say the areas are going to go up from 400 square feet. We'll put in a, an area of 750, maybe 1000, 1250, and then let's say 1500. And if we were to hand calculate these from ASC 7, we could come up with a particular factor here that applies to the uh, cumulative areas for these components. So we'll, we'll go ahead and assign a few factors. We'll say um, the factor here, let's say, is 0.9 for 400. Let's say it's 0 0.8 for 750, 0.6 for 100. 0.5 and we'll do 0.4 for 1500. Okay, so we define our factors. There's a few other selections here. We could use cumulative method or number of supported levels. If we switch this to number of supported levels, then for a column, if it supports two or more levels, we would then apply the, the factor based on the number of levels supported by that column in the stack that it belongs to. We can interpolate between these areas. If a column, for example, has a cumulative area of 850, we would just interpolate between the two values and apply that factor, or we can apply the lowest factor. The minimum number, number of levels to support for reduction is set here, and we can choose to reduce axial force only. If we deselect this, it would actually reduce all actions relative to the column um, where we have reduce live load or live load applied to a particular combination. So let's reduce axial only. I'm going to just go ahead and apply that. Now the way that the program calculates the area is dependent on the tributary load takedown. So for this model I have uh, tendons. You can see the tendons at the lower levels. I'm going to turn those off so we can see it with a little more clarity. And we'll go over to loading, load takedown. If I Apply load takedown. And we're also going to just recalculate the loads. In, in doing that, we could go to any particular level. For example, we'll go down to this level. I'll go to a plan view. 
and we can see the tributary load takedown. I can I can look on here uh, cumulative area. So for this column, the cumulative area is 18,000 square feet. Clearly, that's greater than 1,500, which was our max area in the table. That means this column at this level could only be reduced by 60%, no more. Um, that since that's the maximum input in the table. So the program is using these areas to determine those load factors uh, that we entered earlier. Let's go ahead and go back to the multi-level view. And I'm going to go to column design and just select columns only so I can see only those, those columns. I'll turn off the cumulative areas. And if I come back to this, again, these cumulative areas are checked against the load takedown areas and then the factors are applied to the columns. The only time that the actual reduced live load is used or the factors are, are, are used in conjunction with the axial force from the live load is for column design and also for single level analysis with reactions. I'll give you an example. Um, I'll go ahead and apply that. I can look at the load reduction factors for the columns. This shows me the reduction factors. So you have 0.4 maxes out, and it probably maxes out fairly high up in this stack of columns. So we go from 0.9 to 0 0.8, 0 0.6, down to 0.4, for example. Okay. If I analyze this structure, whether it's through use of tributary load takedown or through finite elements. If I analyze this structure globally, for example, using FEM, let's assume at the base of this structure, at this lower column down at the bottom, we have a force of 2,000 kips. That is the unreduced reaction from live load, for example. If I then go and I take this column and I design it, and I design it for four load combinations. And let's assume all four combinations include live load. These all include live load plus self-weight plus dead load. At that time, if you choose to include the factor, the program will multiply this number times the factor and insert that into the total combined axial force for the combination that it belongs to for the design of the column. Okay, so what if I if I analyze the structure and I see an axial force in this column for example I'll go ahead and turn that on now I'll, I'll use um, service total just as a an example if I go to this has been run for finite elements globally so we have some solution here so the axial force in this column under service load is right around right around 2,000 kips, as stated here. And that is the unfactored axial load. The program will never report in this particular instance graphically the, the factored, um, or excuse me, the, the, the axial load with the live load reduction applied. This is the unreduced axial load in terms of the live load reduction. This also includes other load cases, self-weight, dead load and potentially pre-stressing, but, but this is the, um, we want to make it clear, this is the live load without the, or, or the axial load rather, without the live load reduced. So now we want to talk about the options. How, how do we use this reduction then? If I choose to design columns, I can go over to design settings. And one of the parts of the process of designing columns is to set up your different settings one of the settings is load reduction. If you want to apply those load factors, as I described previously, to the live loads included in these selected combinations, you select yes. In that case, the program reduces the live load, and it is those reduced live loads plus the other load cases forming the combinations that the program will design or code check the columns for. That's case one with respect to this particular live load reduction setting option and these live load reduction factors. Case two is if we have a transfer level. That could mean a, a mat slab, a foundation system, any, any portion of the program or the model that you want to, to apply reactions to for design, the reactions that you apply can be reduced or not reduced in terms of live load. 
So we have a level here. Let's go back and just turn off some of the data shown graphically. I'm going to go back to my single level mode, or rather my, my multi-story mode, and show all components. You can see some of these outlines of these red beams. This is a transfer level. And if we just take a look here at the model globally, we can see we have a column stack here that transfers on this 42 inch deep beam right right there. Okay, so we want to reanalyze this level, I'll circle that, this level in single level. I already have the reaction here. That's based on the global run that I just ran or on the load takedown that I've already done. So I can use load takedown or FEM reaction, one of the two, or I could envelope. The question is, do we reduce the live load? And that's available when you rerun a single level with reactions. So we'll go ahead and get out of the viewer. I'm going to go back to single level and I'll navigate to the level with the transfer. There's my transfer beam. This is already meshed. I'll turn the mesh on just so we can see that. This level is meshed. And we're going to reanalyze. Okay, we're going to reanalyze this level with load takedown. Again, do I apply a live load reduction or do I do not? If I want to, I select this option. That would apply the reduction factor to the live load case here, regardless of the solution selection. It could be tributary or it could be uncracked or it could be enveloped. And we're going to go ahead and run this. I'll, I'll actually do this for strength. I'm going to reduce the live load first. How do I check this? Well, I could go ahead and let's look at the moment in that beam, for example. I'll generate my design cuts and I'm going to design the cuts. Okay, we have some bending moment for that um, set of design sections. Let's go ahead and turn, turn those on. The bending moment reduced, maximum is 16,670. If I reanalyze, without live load reduction. This is with tributary reactions, by the way. We'll redesign. And you can see the reaction, or the, the moment rather, is 20,618. So the difference is, in case one, we reduced live load being applied as a reaction. In case two, we did not. Those are the two options you have for applying live load reduction through the setting. Now the other option really applies to floor design. If I have a single level slab, let's let's work our way down to plane two. Here we have a two-way slab. There are some ramps over here. This is new in version 2019. Ignore the ramps for now, but if I have this slab and on this slab I have live load. Let me go back to this view. We'll go ahead and turn on the, the patch load again. We have, I think, 40 or 50 PSF live load assigned to this. Just a simple load, 75 PSF live load. And let's say I'm, I want to design this slab for reinforcement. I need to design it as a two-way slab. I can reduce live load for two-way slabs, and typically that might be based on, you know, if I have a span here and this tributary looks like this for this. I might base the reduction area on this tributary. So a little different in, in this uh, Adapt Builder or Adapt Floor Pro in this case. What we're going to do is we're going to develop strips. So if I, or we're going to develop subregions rather. If I go ahead and I go to Loading, Pattern, Subregion, I'm going to model just um, divis div divisible lines that allow you to break the slab up into different segments. Okay, so the first one, I might say, th this slab is a little cut up with the arrangement of columns. But there's my first line. My second line might be along here. My third line, you know, here. And then I'm going to go in this direction. Something like that. It's hard to see those. Let me turn on the wireframe view. Okay, these are the lines I just input. And those are going to create 
what we call subregions. This is really used for pattern loading, but we can also apply it to um, to reduction. So th this is area one, for example. This is area two. We call them subregions, subregion three, and so on. So once I def once I define those subregions, then I'm going to go to load patterns. And when I turn on load patterns, the program shows me these little handles, these circles where I can select the different subregions. In this case, I'm not really patterning. I'm just using this to develop live load reduction based on these areas. So you can essentially select your load case, live load. I want to reduce the load based on the area of the subregion. And I'm just going to select all subregions, say that's pattern one. Because I've assigned reduction of live load to pattern one, now I can include these reduction factors and patterns into a load case or load combination. So rather than have uh, live load with factor of 1.6, I would actually change this maybe to 1.6 times pattern one. And now it will base the design of the slab elements for this combination based on this arrangement of um, loads and the, uh, with the application of the factors, the reduction factors. So that's one way to handle it. You could also um, do this a different way with a little tighter control of the subregions. I'm just going to go ahead and select by type subregion. We'll do that. I'll come back to load patterns and that's gone. So if I wanted to, to create subregions uh, with a little more precision, you can enter those as polygons. So I'm going to go back to default view and I'll go to subregion. I don't have to use these lines that are intersecting that divided into different subregions. I could say, okay, my first subregion is going to be this particular polygon. Let me make sure I select the proper slab edge. This is, for example, subregion sub region one. Okay, then I could say this is subregion two. So I'm basically drawing my tributaries in this case. This takes a little more time, but you, again, you can get more precision with it if needed. This is subregion two, and so on. If I only create those two subregions, what I end up with is one, two, and this huge polygon here is three. So when I go to load patterns, there's subregion one, subregion two, and subregion three. I would clearly want to go out and break this into more subregions. But again, this is primarily used for the design of two way slab, flat plate, or flat slab, or beam elements for load patterning. Alternately, you could just directly enter the reduced live load on the slab. Instead of using a uniform live load that's unreduced, use a uniform live load that is reduced, and or use multiple uh, inputs of live load using the add patch load option for, um, for the reduced live load. This, again, typically applies to single level design in, in single level mode for individual flat slabs. It doesn't apply necessarily to global column load takedown. Um, if I was designing a, a single slab, maybe this is a podium, then I don't really need to use this option. I could just apply these reduced live loads and then whatever the reactions are in the columns, I could use those directly um, within the column designer, for example, without even using load reduction because I may not have even set that up for a single level slab to begin with. If you have any questions on this, please contact support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.